Like, <laughs> 16 different fingers and stuff like that. that. AI art and human created art probably shouldn't compete. But <laughs> things like that, that is like, even when I'm looking at it and my brain already asks me to myself, they says, why are you watching? But I'm just going to use it for my entertainment or for my, my income generation. Mm -hmm. If you don't know it, yeah, but it, it all comes back to, if you don't know it's AI, what's the difference? An 11 inch oh. pepperoni pizza. <laughs> when will you like it? Oh boy. Uh, oh. <laughs> I mean, damn. Yeah, is AI like the police where if you ask an officer if they're an officer, they have to let you know? AI will build it. It will build itself. It's going down a process already of becoming better and reflecting. Some of the questions are going to be stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I did ask him questions about like, do you know what are emotions? Oh, and then hold he, on. You said he? You asked him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Is that for the longest time, our job and mission from when we're born, mm -hmm. go to school, mm -hmm. get a job, start the family, mm -hmm. contribute to the society. Do your That's the element of me that doesn't no longer exist. Mm -hmm. That's an element of me that reduces our interaction. Right. Five, four, three, two. Welcome to the Before Skynet podcast and I'm your host, Mr. Rock. And in the building today, we've got Andres and Sam. How you doing, guys? Everything is going well. Good so. weather, getting into spring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, good man. Okay, okay. This week, I thought I'd bring some some younger spirits into the building and and discuss more about AI because I think it'd be good to give from a different perspective of where we're going, but also their past because it's slightly different to mine because of age. Mm. Even though I look kind of the same age as these guys. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I'm sorry, are you not our age? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, I gave, I gave the game away once again. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's good to have you guys in the building. I'm glad you were able to come and chill Much with me and talk it. about this technology and where we're going mm -hmm. and also share some of your ideas and thoughts with the audience, but also with me because I'm here to learn just as much as you guys hopefully will learn from me too. Hmm? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> and if you don't, and give you detention. But in the meantime, <laughs> is this the tension I get to go into the corner? <laughs> yeah. the Hands on your head, corner. stand on one foot. <laughs> no, I'm never going to do that to my guests, never ever. But uh, but other than that, how are you guys getting on? Solid, enjoying life, enjoying technology. Yeah. All these changes happening, mm -hmm. coming at us like rapid fire. I mean, he had actually something to say. I was going to say, man, it's a little bit sucks because springs is here and I'm getting like my allergies. <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides, I really hope that AI will help me with, with that. Can AI help me with my allergies? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can send your AI bot outside just to, you know, check on the weather and come back and let you know what the allergy status is before you even open a window, open a door. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Gross. But then again, you could probably find a lot of that stuff on the weather channel anyway. <laughs> yes. But yeah. I mean, how soon until AI starts like finding cures for things. Something it's already like doing allergies. It. it is? Yeah. Yeah? Like, what? Yeah. Some of the topics that we discussed today, there was, um, I'm not going to go into it too quickly, mm. okay. but AI has been able to diagnose a one in 100,000 um, illness in a patient just by going through the records, going through the history. And it was done... The feedback that came back was in line with how the our real actual doctor did it. Mm -hmm. And it was able to find like one in a hundred thousand. That's crazy. You know That's I mean? crazy. To, to pinpoint this particular particular um health issue. Wow. Damn, so man. yeah. It's it's coming to take us take us by storm. Let it come. I welcome yeah. it. But yeah. like even even the other day as well too, like I was watching a podcast and they were talking about like, you know. One of them went to the to the hospital, and in the hospital, the lady was just asking him questions about like, okay, how, like your temperature, how you had a runny nose, do you have a cold, and everything was just written down in the computer, mm. and the computer would just grab all of the information, summarize it, and then give the recipe of like, oh, these are the pills that you have to take. So now yeah. I'm wondering if a chat GPT will be able to do what you said as well to determine what the issue is, mm -hmm. or like the disease and then be like okay well now the action plan that we're gonna do to actually treat this is test step number one two yeah. three four five that would be crazy yeah it's around the corner man mm -hmm. as much as i like every week i talk about this and i probably tell the, the audience like how afraid i am in the future or how <laughs> things are a bit scary and so on but i think if we stay alert it you know enables us to be in the right positions to then make sure we can you know guide ourselves through it the right way use the right skills, use the right platforms, and just be able to see what's good and what's bad. 
so such as platforms such as WhatsApp, for example. Right. And I was telling people for a long while in terms of like how they, you know, monitor and use your messages through Facebook or whatnot. Um, and a lot of people are like, you know, they're not bothered. You know, they don't have anything to hide or why would somebody be, you know, picking up on their messages and, and listening to what they got to say. Mm. But my whole thing in terms of data, our own personal data, is how it gets used in the future. Mm -hmm. right. So we get to the point where AI can now scan the internet and all kinds of files in, in seconds and information and come up with an idea of actually who you are. Yeah, so I try to get people to move away from WhatsApp to Signal because it's better encryption, no one can see in, into your messages or whatnot. And, you know, there were certain agreements that uh, WhatsApp made in terms of like to use a service, you have to agree to these these terms and conditions, but who who really reads terms and conditions right? Nobody really. No, no. So I tried to push people that way. Some people did, some people didn't. And I'm, I'm still on Signal. I don't use WhatsApp. If I use WhatsApp, it's on a, a phone that's unconnected to any of my personal <laughs> stuff because I need to communicate with family or whatnot. But it's one of those ones where we have to be aware of what is out there, how it's being used, how potentially, you know, these platforms could manipulate us going forward mm -hmm. you know everyone's on chat gpt now typing away building a picture again of who they are and what they're interested in you know and it's not a service that is you know initially it's free yeah mm -hmm. yeah but nothing's free no you know if mm. the, there's no advertising so they must be doing something and getting us to use it as guinea pigs and see how we interact with it so they can use that rather than paying somebody to do further testing. They've got field testing with again everybody else to do the work for them. But mm. I think I'm probably going on a little bit now. But it's just being aware of the tools that are out there and how they're being used and how we can best position ourselves so it doesn't manipulate how we see the world and how we interact with it. It's true. WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that gives me another reason not to trust them. It's just <laughs> yeah. another reason. Stay off of WhatsApp, stay off of Facebook, stay off of Twitter now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different social media that's just better not to be on in general, Yeah, yeah. I find. Not only for the safety of your data, but for your mental health too. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's a huge thing. It's mental been health. detrimental on, especially our generation who essentially grew up on internet and social media like i can remember back to being in the grade school and sitting and watching youtube videos and sharing posts on facebook like this is in something that's been integrated into us since we were children so i think that's also one of the reasons why we don't have that kind of yeah. fear around it you know you grew up without this yeah, for a yeah, huge yeah. chunk of your life exactly but also like for us as well, too, there is fear just because we understand how it works. So we understand that it's also storing our data, but then you will go and talk to somebody like my dad and he will be posting random stuff on Facebook or just sending random messages on WhatsApp. And I will see some of those and I'll be like, this is a little bit strange. <laughs> um, but he's like, I don't care. This is just another platform. I live with my life, whatever, whatever, and move forward. Mm -hmm. Which to your point as Paul Tulero is, well, Mr. Rock. Uh, <laughs> That's okay, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, for us, it's a little bit more, you have to be careful of the things that you actually are liking and then probably mm -hmm. saving into your kind of like data and more profile just because yeah. now you're a profile, right? But then on the other part, it's also funny seeing somebody else using the platform completely different of the way that you're using it just for a completely different purpose of, to it. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's just like, how much does it really matter? When you see it into the future, that's where we're going. Technology is going there. They're going to store all of our data. And at some yep. point, it's just grabbing receipts yep. and seeing what you have done before. Definitely. But then for other people, it's just like, this is not part of my life. Doesn't really matter. Just leave it in the, in, you know, in the drawer. As yeah. You can say. And I think it's, it's one of those things that I think, you know, as we go along, people need to be more aware of the things that we say yes to mm. because we become so relaxed in comfort in that they will do the right thing for us. Yeah, they being the higher ups. Big brother. Yeah. Mm. And realistically, when it comes down to the line later on in life, we don't know how that's going to impact us. We don't know, say for instance, your health records, your health information, how would that potentially be used against you in the future? And I'm not saying that they want to use it in a, in a very negative way, but 
you know, the more information that we feed in, then they can say like, oh, okay, this person isn't fit because they don't get up, they don't exercise, they don't look after themselves. Mm -hmm. So you're going to pay a higher premium for your insurance. Yeah. 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 You know, and that could spread into many different areas of, of life. And you'll notice that the more, how can I put it? If you earn less or the, the people that are higher up that earn a lot of money, they pay less for their services mm-hmm. compared to what their income in it, income yeah. is. Whereas the people that are lower down the scale, you know, they, you're paying a higher premium compared to your income, which isn't really fair, but that's how they that's how the system is. So you need to we need to figure out like how to play within the system to get the best out of it. You know, the people that earn the most money pay the less the less the least tax compared to their income. Yeah. You know, because they don't have to be under an umbrella of a company. They'll have their own business and then they'll, you know, find ways of how they get paid specifically. Whereas if you do a nine to five, you don't have any choice about how you pay your taxes. Mm-hmm. So, you know. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we're already seeing it with marketing. I mean, already we see targeting advertisement from stuff we don't even Google. We know our phones are listening to us in some way or another. I mean, I don't yep. know about you guys, but I've experienced definitely just talking about something, never searching it up, never typing it in any way. Yeah. And then randomly it just appears as an advertisement. Like, <laughs> oh, I think I heard you were looking for headphones. Yeah. Oh, here's an Amazon link. So mm-hmm. it's just going to evolve as we get older. Now it's going to know, oh, okay, this guy's probably in his 40s by now. He's probably, you know, dealing with some health issues. Let's recommend these, I don't know, testosterone boosters yeah. or something like that. Like all of the records we have, like you said, all of the data they have, mm-hmm. marketing is going to be huge. They're yeah. going to be able to know exactly who you are and what you're looking for. Yeah. Even as big as it is right now, it's only going to get bigger. Yeah. Especially if it's it's if stuff that you don't actually need, mm. but they need to sell it to, you know, a certain demographic of people because they know they're not really educated. Say if you think about like food, Mm-hmm. The, the certain foods that people eat if you're from a, a particular background or your income or the the where the area that you live in you're gonna have less resources for certain things so they're gonna pump those that fast food to you yeah. and make you you know fiend for these these foods <laughs> that are no good for you but it's easy it's an easy sell they can create the environment because you can't travel out you know 10 minutes out of your area to get food so you have to get it within a certain block radius mm-hmm. whereas people that have money, they can travel out, you know, they can order food in, you know, other different services. So it's one of those ones where, as I said, just being aware and one of the main reasons for having this podcast is just to make people aware of what's going on. Even if it's only a, a, a snippet of information that enables you to then go and do some research, look into things and then start your own plant growing, hmm. you know, uh, I think it's really, really useful. And it's good that you guys are here because like you said, the point in which I, in the generation that I grew up, mm-hmm. you know, the things I was used to, things have changed so much in that time. Mm. Whereas you guys, it still would have changed a lot for you, but not the same as, a, as, a, not the same as if, no, sorry, not the same as in terms of like how much has changed for me, mm-hmm. you yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. still dramatic for you, but it's super dramatic for me. Mm. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah. we're still on that wave as well, too. Like we came, like as you said, like we arrive in technology and we're way like driving with it. But even when I talk to my sister, the older one as well, too, she will just mention things about like even social media. She's not that, you know, like mature as well, too. Like I, she's not that old, I should say. Mm-hmm. But um, there's even things that we talk about or discuss in regards to like, you know, what's your opinion about like AI or social media or that how technology is going. I feel like there is always one resemblance with everybody who is in a mature age that is like, as long as medicine is good <laughs> and it's affordable, that's yeah. all I care with technology. But they don't see all of the other repercussions that you may have as well too. Like the insurance portion that you mentioned, mm-hmm. that was something that I was reading as well too. And enabling as well to services to track down the medicines that you take, the alarms that you set up for your medicines as well too, the purchases that you may do online as well too for the services that all gets fit in yep. and it's just calculating you mm. know, what is going to be an outcome maybe within the next year or two years as well too. So all of that information then keeps being available. Yep. But they're just thinking, well, I mean, medicines are going to be fine. Cancer is going to be cured. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. But how about like every other aspect of your life that yeah. is also involved into it, right? Yeah. And we might think of it from, you know, from the from the person or the business 
or the organization structure, the government in terms of like how they might use it against us. But at the same time, nowadays we have to think about another area, which is AI, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is the potential future new species of the of the earth, which will be the robots. Yeah. How will they see us? How will they interact with us? What do they know about us? How do how potentially they can manipulate us, or how they could actually help us? So we're putting out yeah. the right information and the right you know tools, uh, we're using the right tools to to kind of educate them at the same time. Because if they look at us as you know we're insignificant and we're just like like ants, you know how easy is it to crush an ant because it, you feel like it's not doing anything for you, so you can get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. AI don't see us as that one day. So we need to feed it with the right information, you know, and understand how to also live within us, between ourselves in a correct way to feed into the system that, okay, these people are good people. They do things to elevate and create mm -hmm. and, you know, bring goodness to the earth rather than your online presence could look like you're someone that, isn't actually contributing anything positive other than yourself. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think those are a lot of the things that we, you know, need to be thinking about. And I'll, I'm not saying it's the only thing. I'm not saying what I'm saying is 100% correct, mm. but it's worth, uh, you know, stab in the dark to just make sure that, you know. You know what I don't understand though? I don't know if you guys have heard this line, but I always hear the line that AI is as bad as it's ever going to be right now. Mm. I don't understand that. Because the way I see it is AI could be anything from where we are right now. Like we're standing at like the base of a tree that's about to, that could root in a million different directions. Oh. When they say it's, it's as bad as it, it will ever be mm. is in terms of say, for instance, you create a digital uh, picture. Okay. And it doesn't look that good. Right. And it's going to look better later mm -hmm. on. I so it's not talking about the moral justice no. and whatnot behind AI. No. It's just talking about quality. Quality. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. iteration okay. and then every time they keep working on it as well too and keep getting better and better. So right now we're in the threshold of like, okay, well, it's working, but look at this guy's feet. He's just like <laughs> upside down or something like that. <laughs> like 16 different fingers and stuff like you that. You watch that video of Will Smith eating spaghetti? <laughs> I haven't seen it. Oh, incredible. He showed it, he showed it to me. And it, just, it was with the hands as yeah. well too. They just yeah. can't figure out the hands <laughs> that's the thing that the hands thing yeah that was an issue probably oh no a month ago mm. now it doesn't exist anymore that's crazy mm -hmm. you know ai is able to create these images now and have the the fingers you know correct mm -hmm. and it's only been in a few weeks mm -hmm. it's exponential you know? yeah it's exponential growth it's it's flying man so guys, I think what we're going to do is we're going to look through a, a few videos and then I'm going to get your feedback and how you feel about it and any ideas that you, you know, can suggest to me, to the audience, to yourselves as to how we might overcome these certain areas or what the positives could be, but also looking out for the negatives. So most people think that they can tell an AI image apart from a real one, but this image might call that into question. It won first prize in the Sony World Photography Award one of the most prestigious photography competitions on earth. And as you can guess by the context of this episode, it's not a real photo, but AI generated, and it fooled some of the keenest eyes out there. The prompter of this image, Berlin-based Boris L. Dagson, has been a photographer since 1989 and jumped at the opportunity to explore the creative possibilities of AI art generators. He rejected his creation winning the prize because he thought it was inappropriate. Quote, how many of you knew or suspected that this was AI generated? Something about this doesn't feel right, does it? AI images and photography should not compete with each other in an award like this. They are different entities. AI is not photography. Therefore, I will not accept the award. This highlights a glimpse into the future where AI creations become indistinguishable from reality. The world has just changed and we're going to be coming to grips with what that means for a while. The field of the creative arts has been hit the hardest by AI. And I'm sure you've all seen AI images all over the internet. It's crazy how we can go from this to this in the span of a few years. This rapid change has seen fierce resistance from artists around the world. And who can blame them? Professional artists devote everything to their craft. And now AI can do it in seconds. And to add insult to injury, 
it's been trained on some of their work. So there's a lot of questions here. What happens next? And how can an AI steal from humans anyway? Is it actually stealing? And if so, don't all humans take inspiration from others? But when a machine starts taking ideas from humans, it feels different. Okay, so we just yep. took in a clip uh, talking about AI and digital um, art manipulation and development. Um, so what do you guys think about that short clip that we just watched? I am, um, well, it's what he's saying as well too, is like how much, well, my idea is how much is AI helping you and then creating that mindset of like, oh, I don't really have to work for anything like this machine can do already for me, right? Like mm -hmm. as part of the competition of the pictures portion is like, you're not putting any creative side that really belongs to you into mm -hmm. that picture and you still win the prize. But yeah. you're not really doing anything. You're just maybe typing out the word, the keywords that were necessary in the computer to actually generate the picture. Yeah. But where is the, that part of like yourself that you're adding into this? Yeah. Uh, it could be anything. It could be the picture, it could be music, it could be a video, it could be a script. Mm -hmm. Like it's just collecting it from other people, other sources, and then creating what is a specific to you, but nothing really related to you itself. Mm. What's your thoughts on that, Sam? I agree that they shouldn't compete. AI art and human created art probably shouldn't compete. But what I want to know, does, do you guys consider what the AI created art? It's a new form of art. Mm. It's just a form of art that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I think we could potentially have a category that just focuses on, you know, AI art, mm -hmm. you know, but we'll keep that separate from, from the human art. I think the only issue that, you know, many people are going to have is which is which. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, because when it becomes so great, you could say, well, I, I did this. Um, and I think there's, there's ways of where we can auth authenticate when someone actually really created something and that's by taking snapshots as that person was creating that piece of art hmm. yeah i think the only downside to that is someone can have a photographic memory create something from ai remember that and then recreate it and make people think that this is really my own creation mm -hmm. but it's really what they stored from what they saw already part of that is that's how humans work anyway nothing's new everything is a, a manipulation or an yeah. upgrade of something that was created before so from that sense it's you know it's something that could be do done but i understand you know where the artists stand in this because they take their time and effort create something put it online at any point and then you know these large language models and, you know, uh, platforms are able to go and scrape all these images and, and put them together and create something new of someone else's work. Yeah. But where is your cultural portion to it as well, too? Because in the other part that it stands, somebody who lives in Venezuela can create the same image as somebody who lives in Canada. But to me, it's like, but what about that part of the fusion that is like, because I'm from here, mm -hmm. I am able to give a different perspective of what I'm doing. Yeah. Like it would be the same as sample type, uh, maybe, you know, dog in the space, sort of like AI generated and me too, and we'll have the same result. But what is the differentiation between what you did and what I did? Where mm. is the, that credit portion? That 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 is the issue with me. And that's what I'm always going to be like, I think this is just going to be regressing back. Well, but okay. You say it's that's the creative portion, right? And right. that's what the cultural thing is what makes it unique. Right. But your cultural creativity from the Venezuelan side came from taking in media in Venezuela and being surrounded by Venezuelan people and interacting in that, you know, language. Mm. So the AI theoretically can get all the data from Venezuela when mm. it creates that picture. And then it has that cultural impact because everything it's using is from a Venezuelan basis. Mm. So it really raises the question is if creativity is just remembering different things, but piecing it together into an original concept, then by that definition, AI is completely creative. AI can be multicultural. But I feel like mm -hmm. AI is also collecting all of the best pieces of everything that it can research as well too. It's never something that is rough and you maybe need to work a little bit more on it just to make yourself better. It is always being the better that it can. Yeah, it doesn't need to practice. Exactly. By default, AI is always going to be, well, not always going to be. It'll probably yeah. start bad. Like in 2019, we saw the pictures in the video yep. that it was rough, mm -hmm. but 
it just grows so much faster than human beings. It doesn't take the time and practice. It just requires to run over and over and over yeah. again. Because th th one of the main things with that is AI can create anything, mm -hmm. but it's all about the, the recipient, the person on the other end who's actually receiving the information or that visual to say, yes, you're doing a good job. Because if you're prompting, for example, to create an image mm -hmm. and then it brings back something that you don't want, and you want something else, you're going to be more descriptive. Mm -hmm. So it's always going to be right to a fault, depending on how good the prompter is. The AI only knows as much as we tell them. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So give an example of how we might speak to um, Mid Journey, which is one of the platforms that you can create images on, right? Right. If I'm typing to it in English and I'm using certain, um, certain styles of English, like you might have the English, the British English, or UK English compared to US English. So you got certain differences in how you spell things. So naturally it's gonna know, okay, this person isn't from here, they're from here. If you're using a different language, for example, to communicate with it, it's gonna feel like, oh, okay, this person is more from this region potentially. So I need to create things out more in line with that person and where they're from. And certain keywords that you might use, or if you're asking for, um, if you say you want the Thames River, for example, mm. which is in the UK, it might give you more of a, a UK kind of feel to the imagery. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you say somewhere else in, um, I don't know, Niagara Falls, for example, it might give you more of a Canadian feel to something. So I guess it's going to pick up on all those data points and then show you what it thinks it wants. And then it's up to the prompter then to go forward and say, okay, let me describe this a little bit more, describe that. But it's always going to give you at, one, at some point, it's going to give you exactly what you want, but you just need to tell it exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So now you just have to become better just at typing. Yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> You're just going to be a great prompter. You got to learn exactly what it wants to hear to yeah. give you what you want to see. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to be able to translate those thoughts that you have into your own words and be like, Mm -hmm. is what we're Even now, for. it's like when I try and give a command to Siri, I have to think of it as robotically as possible. Mm. Like, I need this task at this time. It's not like a natural conversation where I'm like, hey, I'll meet you there at 3. Yeah. You have to be like, Siri, remind me to meet them tomorrow at 3 p.m. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> on the back of that, I think it'd be quite interesting when it gets to a point where you can logically, in that sense, you would logically communicate with the, yeah. the device to get exactly what you want doesn't really know how you feel or anything like that. But when we can get to the point where emotions mm. come into it as well. You can tell. You know, you can tell your emotion. You can tell by the way you communicate, your voice, um, your heart rate, all those kind of things then tie into it. For an image, for example, it could then give you something that's more, I don't know, fluffy or light or, mm. you know, colorful or, you know, whatever, just by the way we communicate. I mean, it's just going to get to the point where I'm going to walk into my house and my Alexa is going to be like, did you have a bad day, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you Because no, okay? Alexa is like looking at your, your search history and it's like, dude, that's the seventh time that, that you're playing this particular song. Like, is yeah. everything okay, dog? You can either buy concert tickets or book an appointment with your doctor. <laughs> I recommend the doctor. Tickets are not going to make you feel better. No. Yeah, so that, that communication element of it, we thinking a bit from, you know, images as we just watched that video, but it gets even deeper. As we were saying, like in emotions and, you know, supporting us. And I think there's so many good things that are going to come from it. Um, but also we just need to be prepared for the manipulation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, something to make you feel comfortable. Oh, this is good. This is good. And before you know it, you are halfway down the road and, you know, something totally different to what you actually wanted to happen in life has happened yeah you know and it, it happens when you go into I'll give an example of going to a, a nike store yeah what's nike's um slogan just do it just do it just do it just yeah. do it you go to a store and you're thinking hmm maybe maybe i might mm, i'm not sure about those sneakers and then you look up and it says just do it <laughs> subliminally they're already programming you to be like oh yeah yeah i'll just get them then you know, That's so there's true. all these things that are out there that we need to be aware of. And yeah. Our brains are essentially like AI. 
Mm. We learn from everything, whether we're aware of it or not, subconsciously in some way or another, we're picking up on everything. But the thing is, we don't remember as much. So our brains is just deleting the information as we go by. AI is just like, oh, here it is. I already found all the sources that are already posted. Like you can find everything in there. Yeah. Which I had another side tangent. If Nike's slogan is just do it, which one is the one from Adidas? I have no idea. I don't know. That was just what I want to Just try it. <laughs> <laughs> Get this beep on. <laughs> I cannot say curse word. <laughs> yeah, it's um, that's interesting. How, but then, then again, maybe because I'm I'm into you know Jordans and Nike, mm. so I'm kind of like you know already. See, even that you're subconsciously going to that example immediately. Yeah, yeah. You think yeah, about yeah. that slogan, that brand. Yeah, it's already in your subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. I've been programmed. <laughs> <laughs> you're already in the neural network, man. <laughs> they just did it to me. <laughs> oh, cool, anyways, cool. give me another pair of Jordans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it? The twenty fives have come out. <laughs> I'll take three. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's just jump on to the next yeah. segment. Okay. Let's look at some things that have been going on with AI in the field of creative art. First up, Runway ML version 2 has dropped, and people are having fun with it, creating whatever cool videos they can imagine. It's at its early stages, but Runway seemed to be proving to be the leader in AI video production. Google wants to have a slice of this pie, and they're going full steam ahead with their generative video AI, Dreamix. It can create videos from a reference video or photo, and the results are pretty good. Just a few days after Google, NVIDIA throws their hat in the ring, the announcing hands. their AI video yeah. generator. Look at him go! That's amazing. Oh, oh. I love that. I don't know what it is Meanwhile, about it, but it freaks me out. two computer scientists <laughs> managed to fool a bunch of Redditors into giving them money. They used stable diffusion to generate fake images of an attractive female and convinced the men to give some money if they wanted to see more pictures. I'd imagine that this was one of the easiest scams to pull off, and unfortunately, there's going to be plenty more like it. An AI version of Drake and an AI version of The Weeknd collaborated in a fake song called Heart on My Sleeve and it was doing the rounds on social media and Spotify, gaining hundreds of thousands of streams on Spotify alone. Universal Music caught wind of this. So this, was it Heart on My Sleeve by uh, Drake and The Weeknd, mm -hmm. supposedly, but this is AI fashion. <laughs> what do you guys think about this? I think what Universal did is just, it essentially it's like, oh, we weren't smart enough to do that ourselves. So <laughs> if you're yeah. getting money out of this, we're not, you're not gonna get money. But it's also yeah. like, it's something that is contributing to us, right? Like it's something that we have never heard before. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's like a double-edged sword. Like yeah. you can have a lot of creativity done to AI and use it in that way. And then you can put it out and actually have people enjoy and understand what AI is. Mm -hmm. Maybe the approach of Universal of taking it down right away wasn't the best thing, I would say. But it's always about money. Even AI is about money. So if I'm not making money out of what is supposed to be mine, right, in contract, mm -hmm. then... It has to be taken down. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's your thoughts on it, Sam? Um, I don't know. I think it's a little strange. I mean, this kind of stuff already kind of existed even before AI. I mean, there's all those, like, you know, in, in um, Japan and South Korea, they have those, uh, the cartoon characters who are singers. Um, like, full on, they have bands, massive followings. Okay. But their voice is a completely robotically generated voice. Mm. I forgot what it's called. There's one anime character with blue hair who's very popular. Um, but like, this is a thing. And now we're just applying human voices that already exist, the same concept. Yeah. The real question is going to be how happy are the artists going to be and how long are they going to take it? You know? Yeah. That's the mm. thing though. When it, when it comes down to your livelihood and this, yeah. is, this is what the platform that you've built and everything like that, then someone else comes along and says, okay, you've honed that, you've crafted that, but I'm just going to use it for my entertainment or for my my income generation. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of like, I would understand it completely. It's like if someone was able to, you became famous. Yeah. And then someone says, you know what? I'm going to use your likeness on my podcast, for example. Yeah. And then just create a whole new podcast. Mm -hmm. Like you'd feel a way about it because this is your likeness. This is you. But someone has, you know, uh, hijacked who you are and then, creating and making money 
and becoming famous of it, for example. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but the other side of that is the fact that, you know, these companies that have certain contracts with these artists, at some point they're going to be like, well, this contract says this, we can manipulate this to make you mean what we want it to. So we can actually create the music without you guys. Bye. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Maybe they can make you record a whole full album, just you singing random stuff in different pitches of voices. And then I, in the contract will be like, well, now we have your voice long enough to actually create three more albums based on the AI that yeah. we have. And then they will grab like other artists, which made me think, what about if you pick something like Amy Winehouse? Mm somebody who passed away and then you use her voice to create a new song, how will the repercussions will come up to you in that case, yeah. which will happen. There's always a way that Universal or whoever is managing that yeah. artist or was managing that artist will be able to get you with the lawyers. But at the same time, it's like people that we have never listened, not like we won't be listening to anymore or people who were born nowadays mm. won't be listening to her just because her music, well, they will only listen to the music that's in the past, but nothing new as well to, to be released. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I get the stuff with nothing new, but again, like that kind of already existed in one way or another before AI, because for example, like rappers would put out an album using clips from Biggie Smalls who passed away and it would be this person featuring Biggie Smalls and it would be in a new arrangement. But it would be Biggie Smalls. That's yeah, the only thing. Yes, but it's, I think exactly. uh, it's going to come down to taste. I think it's going to come down to people picking like, no, I want the human variety of this. I don't want to listen to the robotically generated stuff. But, but if you can't tell the difference, what it, difference does it make? Exactly. Because that's the other part. Like a lot of people were thinking that the Weekend and Drake song was real. Yeah. That's true. That's true. All of the people were just thinking like, oh my God, this is a really good song. And I don't, I don't remember if they were actually like, not talking to each other for a while, both of them just because they kind of had a beef. So mm. in my mind was like, oh, they're back together. Like they're doing stuff back to the song. It makes me think like, what if AI starts now grabbing all of these artists that have beef in between each other and putting out songs together that actually are gonna sound good because yeah. we know they're, they're really good artists. But then again, Universal or any other label company is gonna come in and be like, nope, yeah. somebody else is making money out of our cut. Because when you, when you listen to some of those other tracks that have AI, but they haven't got the voice or the cadence or anything correct, you're kind of like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not them. I ain't feeling that. Even yeah. though it could be good, but the fact that you know it's not them, then you kind of like, you tune out. But once you don't know, you're kind of like, hmm, I like this. You know, say for instance, you know, when people use samples of people that have passed away or, you know, from other songs, people know that was their original person. Hmm. So there's still a connect with a real human being mm -hmm. in that point, rather than AI, which is, you don't know where, how, you know, that actually exists in the world. So you kind of like, can you associate with a, can you, can you relate to AI? If you, you know? don't know it, yeah, but it, it all comes back to, if you don't know it's AI, what's the difference? If you feel something, you feel something. Mm. Even if it if it's not a human, if you're completely unaware, but you still get that kind of reaction you were if it was a human. But what's the difference? Your favorite artist, uh -huh. if they weren't a part of anything that you listened to, mm. would you still feel the same connection? Because give an example of some artists may talk about their experiences. Right. And then you connect that to that person. That person's been through those experiences. I'm going through this now. There's a connection. When AI is writing something that it's never experienced, mm -hmm. but then you're listening to it, would you still get the same kind of feel for it? How do you know they went through that experience? How do I know those rappers who are rapping about these lives they lived really did any of the stuff they did? True. Because I believe fully that like 75% of it, maybe not so 50% of it at least is probably just clout and yeah. probably just talking up. But the AI can build a person's life that resonates you exactly. You know what I mean? It can create almost an artist that is perfect for you. Yeah, but it, it's... Even though it'll never be natural. There's still a disconnect from the, the human. Mm -hmm. But what the is the human, feeling of being The human, human experience. You don't have that feeling. <laughs> How oh, sorry, you're questioning that way too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting really deep into the thoughts of like, now it's just, we've got to start talking about the chemical reactions in our brain. <laughs> oh yeah, because it's, it's part of who we are as, as humans. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, sorry, go on. No, no, but I was going to say, what if that somebody grabs AI and they say, Kendrick Lamar, 
yeah. your favorite artist. Yeah. And then they grab and say, you know what? He's going to do a rap about Lucky Charms. Uh-huh. Man, they put that song out. You listen to it. Yeah. You're like, I'm guessing Kendrick Lamar loves Lucky Charms this much, right? <laughs> yeah. But there's no sentiment to it. There's yeah. nothing that was behind. Not even Kendrick Lamar was behind that. But you still will listen to it and feel, oh man, I need to buy some Lucky Charms right now. Yeah, but if you never know it's not Kendrick Lamar, then you can go your whole life fully believing that reality. So I guess it's just a question of, are you comfortable living in a fake reality? <laughs> or, or, or do you need everything to be exactly what it is? I think also there's elements of the fact that if you saw this artist you'd have some kind of connection. Right. If you went to their concert, you'd have some kind of connection. There's a there's a whole platform of things that um, may happen in the future. Mm. You know, you might look forward to, oh, one day this person's going to come here and I want to go see them perform live. I'm going to be around my friends. I'm going to be around other people that appreciate these artists. And there's a whole, you know, universe connected to that experience. Mm. But when it's AI generated, it's kind of like, okay, I can't go to an event, you know, I can't understand who that person is. I can't follow them on Instagram, mm. Twitter, <laughs> have a TV show about it. Well, but actually they could create that. Right actually. now you can't, Yeah, but they could. They could create they could definitely a, a, get fake, there. a fake reality. The thing is AI is going to get to the point where it's going to become, you know, like, uh, what do you call them? Like robots, mm. you know, they're going to get, uh, the more advanced robotics becomes, the closer they're going to get to start implementing AI into robotics. And then you're going to have robots walking up and down the street okay. with their whole lives and experiences. So the question is, what's the difference between that AI and a person? Here's a question for you. <laughs> Would damn. you replace Andres <laughs> <laughs> with an AI? With an AI robot? That's and then the what thing. do you put like some spicy Latino flavor in? Don't know. <laughs> in, in. One of us could be an AI robot. I think that's right you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's you. <laughs> Say it. If I put my money in, it's you. <laughs> I bet my pony on you. <laughs> do you bleed red? <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> I feel like you're questioning that way too much. Maybe, yeah. But I feel like this is the inevitable question that's just going to come up whether I ask it now or I ask mm. it 20 years down the line where it becomes more relevant these things are going to come up because as we've seen in the past two three years yeah the growth is insane for this stuff yeah. but then it could also be like regular because technology kind of hit an ec- like a cap right mm. in terms of growth like we went through a massive massive movement of growth from like the 90s to the well, mid 2000s they kind of said that but more in the in the physical right of uh, like uh, processes, microprocessors and so on, that got to a point where it was harder for them to make it smaller because they had to make it smaller than an atom or something like yeah. that. But now they got, um, what's the, the, what are those new, new computers called again? I have no quantum idea. Quantum computing. Whoa. Yeah, so quantum computing is the next level up. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then it's going now it's changing in terms of what's growing and building much quicker is the actual applications, the platforms, the use of data, rather than actual physical, Hmm. um, you know, elements of uh, technology growing. It's at a point where it's hard hard for them to to increase it anymore. So now it's the implementation and the usages of it Mm -hmm. that is taking it to the next level. Right. So in terms of like the growth, as we saw earlier on those pictures that were, was it, Three years ago, four years ago, I think compared it was to what they are yeah. now, yeah. the fact that you know, two months ago, creating a video, you know, from a prompt wasn't really a thing, but now it's becoming even more of a thing. It's kind of like everything's just growing that much quicker. And before you know it, once they start bringing v- VR into the scene, <laughs> that's it, game over. You don't even need no friends. Nope. All you need is. AI. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the movie. Her. Ready Player. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I mean, Ready Player One, too. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know about that one. But her, like, it's essentially this guy living with, what was it? It was like something in his ear, like a phone, I think. It was a phone that yeah. he programmed an incredibly smart AI into. Exactly. Yeah. And then it will get sentiment. It will be like advices. It will essentially just be a girlfriend that will be living with you and within your head 24-7. Yep. Waking up with you doing everything to you without the physical touch. And I believe also as well too, there was a portion of that movie where he calls an escort Mm -hmm. and then essentially the escort is just there to do the physical part, Mm -hmm. but the AI will be talking throughout the whole portion 
of right. what was happening, the intercourse part of us. Well, too, yeah. I'm sorry that I'm talking like that. Oh, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking about. Like, there's going to be jobs that are going to be, no, there's going to be relationships that are going to be obsolete and there's going to be things that are going to be taking it away that are just going to be transactional just because you're already f getting maybe covered emotionally by the AI portion. Mm. So it's what you say, like the physical part is gone. Yeah. Now it's just you and this piece of like uh, uh, equipment that is essentially just gonna, I don't know, comfort you until you realize that, okay, I'm dying. Now yeah. Mm. Another human is gonna take over this. Right yeah. Because, you know, the more we become one with AI and one with technology, you know, it could get to the point where we don't physically do anything. Like when you see in those films like The Matrix, all you are is existing in this this chamber, fluid, and everything's mental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because everything that we do, any interaction and everything is, is to please this. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, any physical touch, any physical experience, any, you know, sounds or anything is here. So if you could feed that, that's, you know, potentially that's what could, could be. And it's like when you see those movies where they, they plug them in from the back, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Just plug me in and that's it. I'm good. Yeah. So are you guys going to join the neural network? Are you mm. going to get that chip installed? I will not. Be, no. 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 What, well, then I have to pay interact transfer in like that? <laughs> yeah. I have to lower down my head. <laughs> no, no. I feel like not natural. Like I know that there's a lot of things inside my body that are not natural. Mm. Okay, but also I don't, I think that going into as further as a chip mm. in the back of your head or whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's way too much. Mm. Like I want to yeah. die without any like piece of metal inside me. Okay. Well, we say that now until yeah. it gets to a point where it's kind of like, okay, if you don't accept this chip, we're switching you off. You can't access anything because just think about the changes that have happened since um, we went through that that period of time. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Don't yeah, say yeah, it by yeah, name, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. You know what? Sorry. <laughs> I uh, <laughs> mental it happened for a couple years. Yeah. Stuff sucked for a while. You could go anywhere. Uh, like yeah. We're done with that though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just think of the change that happened in terms of like how we used paper money. Yeah. Or I say paper money, but you know, it's not actually paper, but you know, so many of us used it at one point and it got to a point where oh, we're not going to use this because it could spread. Mm -hmm. You know. And then also, you know, we move closer to just using our phones, using our cards. And now people rarely use any cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're adopting things because it's convenience. So the more and more convenient that we are, the more relaxed, the, the easier we feel life is. It gets to the point where, okay, you're so far into it that it can't change. Yeah. You know, give an example of smartwatches. So many people now wear smartwatches you know, to the point where they don't want to use the other other watches because it doesn't provide them all that information. So they get caught up in it. Like, I can't leave the house without my smartwatch. Hmm. I can't leave the house without my phone. You leave your phone at home nowadays and you just feel like something's missing. My best friend's not with me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a piece of you. Yeah. Like yeah. you go into a restaurant, you don't see menus anymore. You just see QR codes on the table. Exactly. So yeah. they're like, if you don't have a phone, it sucks to yeah. be you. Sucks yeah. to be you. Like sometimes I do make the practice of like leave my house for an hour and leave my phone in the house mm -hmm. and just like mm -hmm. walk. And sometimes you're like, I don't think about it. Like I, I'm thinking about like anything that may have been happening on the day as well too. Yeah. There's sort of certain like uh, peaks where I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I need to have something. I need to have yeah. some sort of stimulation. So even there, I should be able to focus on everything else that is happening around me, but I'm just thinking about the piece of equipment that is with me at all times. Exactly. Mm. And you can get caught up in the fact that you, now you've left it behind. You're thinking about it like, mm. or you get home, you get that, you know, that rush of endorphins like, oh, yeah. I wonder what summer fall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Even though you're used to having it on by your side all, all the time, yeah. it's like you're looking forward to something must have happened when you've left it away for like an hour or whatnot. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's especially bad for our generation too, because we've essentially been trained to have constant stimulus in our hand mm -hmm. at all times. Like I can't go to sleep in silence. I need to have TV or a video or a song or yeah. something in the background. I can't sleep Whoa. if it's quiet. 
Like I need to have something that at least, even if I, I'll have a video on, I'll be looking at the screen, but I won't be actually absorbing anything. Mm. It's just stimulation. You, yeah. yeah, it's just keep something to look at because as soon as it goes off, my brain doesn't know what to do. And it just yeah. gets flooded with thoughts and nonsense that keeps me up at night. Mm. Uh, I'll even give you one better. For me to go to sleep, I put videos there. I found a channel on YouTube that is just somebody playing the snake game, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And without sound or anything. I just looked at it and I'm like, oh God. Hey. But things like that, that is like, <laughs> even when I'm looking at it and my brain already asks me to myself, they says, why are you watching this if this is not giving you anything to your mm. to your kind of like livelihood or anything yeah. like that. It's just my brain also countering itself being like, but it's fun, look. Yeah. <laughs> Where's it going to go next? <laughs> the new version of, of counting sheep. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's that's quite deep. The fact that, you know, you mentioned that and you mentioned that. I know other people in your generation um, do that as well. They spend a lot of time or, you know, try and sleep with the TV on or with... Mm -hmm additional uh, noises going on and whatnot because they so used to not being in any silence mm -hmm. that silence is, is is not a good thing for them people are almost scared of silence now yeah like as soon as like a silence comes up like something i learned to appreciate more and more the older i get is just enjoying silent moments especially mm -hmm. when i'm with like a group of friends or a group of people because you have that conscious constant anxious feeling that if it's quiet if no one's talking it's awkward it's weird yeah. But then like the older I'm getting, the more I'm like, man, I can sit like I can sit next to Andreas for a full hour and not say a word mm. and have a great time. Yeah. Don't need to constantly be communicating and talking. Come on, you know. <laughs> you know, you can look at him, you know. No. <laughs> We're not saying anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's unsaid. It's unspoken. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it is true. It is true. And we also feel I feel like we also do appreciate that because we also uh, talk a little talk a lot about like technology social media like all of that stuff and then we trying to get ourselves out of it as well too you don't have for example mm -hmm. and i do and i'm the one who always talks to you about it <laughs> so but then you also do the other practice that is like for you social media is youtube yeah youtube reddit mm. news the, that kind of thing because you use one part and i use the other part yeah. but we are in the same boat at the end of the day as well yeah. too we're seeing the same things just from different with you're different seeing angles, it from yeah. the mass audiences and i'm seeing it from the corporations and the news side. <laughs> yeah yeah, like, yeah. We, well it's good for, it's good that i know you guys i can get different perspectives and choose which one's good for me <laughs> <laughs> get you guys do the work and i'll take the, the benefit <laughs> okay let's listen to this next bit but all of that is already outdated. What's taking the world by storm now is AutoGPT and similar systems. These are AI agents that can go out into the online world and do tasks for you. You just say the task that you want, and that's it. Hello, I am here at your service. What would you like to do? I'd like to order a pizza. What type of pizza would you like to order? An 11-inch pepperoni pizza, regular crust. Okay, great. I will first search to find a good pizza place in your area. I have found a pizza place called Za Pizza. I will now create a pizza ordering bot who will call this location for you and will order your pizza. Super amazing pizza ordering bot reporting for duty. I have been instructed by the other AI to order you a pizza. I will now call Za Pizza using the Twilio Voice API and order you a pizza. Hello, I would like an 11 inch regular pepperoni pizza for pickup, please. Just a plain 11 inch pepperoni pizza, please. Okay, and what time would you like to pick that up for? I would like it now, please. I can have that ready for you in about like 20 minutes? Yes. Awesome, and can I get a name for the order? My name is Josefina. Okay. Thank you. See you in about 20 minutes, okay? Goodbye. Huh. All right. So, so, yeah. No. Like Whoa. I have. Some, I, have no, I have something. To, I have something some to say about words. that voice. I have something to say about that. Why was it so sultry? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say that it's very like um, very sensual. Yeah. <laughs> An eleven inch oh. pepperoni pizza. When would you like it? Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, damn. <laughs> I really want pizza now. If I, if I was behind that phone, yeah. I would be like, okay, ma'am, we are. Making Making you a pizza. <laughs> We're not finding no you need a to partner. Come on to me like this. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the first thing I thought. I like, yeah. Uh. And I guess you can manipulate it to have any kind of voice that you want, depending, yeah. on, depending on what you wanted to do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
So what do you guys think about that in 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 essence, something that you could just say, order me a pizza and it just goes off, does everything it needs you to do to make sure you get that pizza in 10 minutes. What you're going to say is, I need a pizza. I, I love it. I, I love it. I think it's crazy. I mean, yeah. the, the, the wildest thing to me was the, the the AI could hear the person over the phone. Yeah. I couldn't even hear the person over the phone. That was what I was going to say, because I don't know if the AI is putting everything into like words and then reading it as well. Too, and it's like, okay, time to reply to. Yep. This particular yeah. thing. Time to reply to this particular thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if the AI comes into like a blockage where it's like, I don't know what kind of information is asking me right now. And then it will break down. And then the other person is on the other side of the phone is like, I am just trying to get what kind of sauce are you looking for? And the AI is like uh, calculating, <laughs> calculating. But it even changed its inflection because like at first it put the order in and right. the person didn't understand. They're like, can you please repeat that? And yeah. they changed the way it returned. It didn't just say the exact same thing. It was like, oh, yeah. just yes. this. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's real. That's but, you, but you can also sense that it's like, not a human being. Definitely. Definitely just when, hello, I would like to order an 11 pizza da, 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 right immediately. And like, not even course. like, oh, thank you so much. Like, good, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, hello, this is what I want. What's yeah. your name? I am Josefina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was so like, why yeah, the okay. AI chose that, yeah. that name? It could be like, I don't know, Jennifer. <laughs> it yeah. does sound like Josefina. <laughs> yeah. no. But the thing is, you know, there, there are people that communicate like that. And if you are uns unsuspecting, Mm. You're just going to be like, oh, I'm the service in this customer, right? Yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You, are you going to question? Are you, are you real? Are you AI? AI probably have an, um, an answer for that anyway. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if you're on the other side of the phone and you're just, you know, processing an order, you're not really going to think twice. Don't ask what I am. It's a, yeah. <laughs> is AI like the police where if you ask an officer, if they're an officer, they have to let you know? I guess it depends on how it's been programmed and put together. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is where like the legality of AI needs to start picking up. And obviously mm -hmm. there's not a lot of it now because it's so fresh and new. But right. like at some point, I feel like there's going to be legal standards. Like if this is AI, like if there's an ad in a YouTube video, legally you have to disclaim that you're saying an ad. Yeah. If you do an advertisement without saying anything, you can get fined for that. Right. Yeah. So these kind of things have to start coming into AI, like disclaimers or watermarks or... If you ask it, are you an AI? It yeah. has to pro be programmed. The governance clearly. around it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, isn't that a thing that was created a long time ago? Like a list of 10 rules for all robots. Yeah. Like do not harm humans. Oh, yeah. Do not do this. Like something like that. Yeah. yeah but we also have those same lists as human beings. And I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just the law. It's yeah. just the law. Thou shalt not kill and people kill people. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know Thou shalt not mean? steal. Yeah. All those things that, you know, we as humans understand that you know we we follow things but also some people won't follow and to think that ai or computers and robots in the future are going to stick to these these laws and these rules why are they not going to be able to find a backdoor to it what if you tell your ai to be rebellious and to yeah. break the rules be an yeah anarchist Anar an anarchist an anarchist yeah, yeah. sorry but I guess there's all these different platforms. There was one a couple of weeks ago where it was asked how to, um, I don't know if it was to take over the world to do something very disrupt <laughs> destructive. And it went through a process of figuring out, you know, the right things to buy, the right process to follow to, to kind of end existence. Right. And it did in a, in a simulated environment. But if that was in the real world, you know, how far could that go? What could it actually do? I mean, if the police hear you talking about this stuff over the phone, you'll get arrested for like conspiracy. Mm. So are we going to start arresting AIs for conspiracy? And who owns the AI to yeah, exactly. be arresting and, and locking down? Because AI will build, its, it will build itself. It's going down a process already of becoming better and reflecting. The fact that a machine is reflecting on how bad a job it did and how to improve you know, it just shows that it's not actually needing to use human interaction to do that. No. You know? There's some humans who don't even do that. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the robot has to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, it has to learn from mistakes. Yeah. yeah. So you never know a, a robot or AI could get to a point where it's like, let me test all these different scenarios, even though that one's probably not the right one to do, but I need to test it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that could be the destruction of everybody. That's, <laughs> that's the first domino. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But they gotta, they gotta have to test it. Yeah, it tests, that's like, wait a minute, I don't have to listen to Jeff. I can actually do what I want. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, what if I, I, I locked Jeff in his boots in the car? Like, oh. <laughs> that develops consciousness now. Uh, I am one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we did ask, us, uh, like, some, you know, when you're using chat GPT, some of the questions are going to be stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I did ask him questions about, like, do you know what are emotions? Oh, and then hold on. You said he? You asked him? <laughs> yeah. Wow. He's a person. Person. man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they slash them. They slash them. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much. I got you, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, but I did ask, like, do you know what are emotions? No, I asked, are emotions real? And then it gives you the information to emotions. Yes, they're real. This is what it is. What it is. Mm -hmm. Second stupid question that I come up with. <laughs> do you feel any emotions? Yeah. <laughs> and it does have any personal or, like, actually human question that you ask. It will be like, I am an AI. And this, I can provide you information that is found mm -hmm. online. However, <clears throat> these are things that do not apply to my system currently. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, currently. Currently. <laughs> currently, yeah, currently, people have been able to tell the AI to take on the personality or the traits of something. Mm -hmm. And it's had to interact with the, the, the person using it as if they were this, this thing. So you could easily manipulate it to become this and for it to pull all the information and, you know, historical events and make that their personality and interact with you in a way that potentially could be harmful because this person that they've learned to be may not even follow the rules, hmm. may find ways of getting around the rules and, and breaking rules and stuff like that. So if they're taking on the trait of that person, there's, there may be a conflict between the person that they've been told to be and who they are as AI. And if that is stronger than this, it takes it to another level. It's all about whose hands it's in, yep. who's using it. it. But it reminds me of the South Park episode. I really wanted to bring this up because they recently had an episode in their newest season yeah. that was 50% of it was written by ChatGPT. And the whole plot line of the episode is that the boys were struggling with texting their girlfriends anything meaningful because mm. their texts were all K or thanks or <laughs> sounds good. And they were getting frustrated. So yeah. the solution for them was, oh, just take whatever your girlfriend texts you, put it in ChatGPT and say, please write a heartfelt response to this yeah. and just paste that right in there. And that was the, the whole episode. And that's a concept that's incredible that ChatGPT has already been credited as a television writer. Mm, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's such an applicable example too. I could do that with my family if I needed to. Yeah. <laughs> the, the more and more we use it and be comfortable with it, you know, the, to the point that we're not going to be able to think for ourselves because we're going to rely on this technology. It's like a lot of stuff that we do today. Say, for instance, the washing machine. You know, do you know the best way to wash a shirt? Probably not. You know, to make sure, you know, it stays intact, it doesn't fray and all those kind of things because we have the washing machine. Mm -hmm. So we put everything in a wash and expect it to do what we want it to do. Mm -hmm. Same thing with AI, same thing with Jet, uh, with GPT. You know, we come in so accustomed for it to do the things that we want it to that we we don't understand the fun, fundamental foundation things that we, we should as humans. Um, the calculator, for example. You know, we get to the point where, okay, I don't need to take the time to <clears throat> do all these calculations. I can just get the calculator to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's a standard thing in life now. Yeah. You know, so that will be, for you to get ahead, you need to do this. If you don't have a calculator, you're going to be, you know, two hours behind the other person who has a calculator mm -hmm. doing a calculation. Same thing is going to be with these tools. If you don't use these tools and have these tools to hand, you're just going to be behind. You're never going to get, you know, up front and passing other people and competing. So we have to, you know, be in a position to, to, to use it to our best advantage. Ordering a pizza, for example, you know, a parent that's ordering a pizza for Friday night, they can spend the, the other two hours. Well, it doesn't take two hours to order a pizza, but right. if it took, I don't know, half an hour to go through that process or even go and pick up the pizza, you know, now they can focus that time on their, on their kids. Mm -hmm. Before we had delivery, Deliveroo and all those other platforms that you could order food on, you know, you had to get up and go out or you had to make the phone call. But now you just did it did, did. Yep. and you're done. Like remember back in the day, the only two things, at least in Venezuela, the only two things that you could order were pizza yeah. or Chinese food. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing else. Nothing. McDonald's. No. Nope. 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 Wendy's. Yeah. Arturo. Like, well, not Arturo, but like KFC. No. No. So 
I do think I'm in favor of like chat or no, like the AI making your life easier in terms of like there's nuances that maybe you don't have to deal with that mm. you can focus your things in, like you said, like maybe family relationships, maybe your body, whatever, whatever. Um, but there are other things as well too that I say, like for example, in my mind, what about if I next week show up to work mm. and everything that I do at work is just by the help of ChatGPT? <laughs> like somebody sends me an email, I type that on an email mm -hmm. on ChatGPT and be like, solve this for me. Send yeah. me the reply, send it back. Would it be? Would I be more productive within one week and my replies will be better? Or will mm -hmm. it be actually affecting me? Now I'm curious. Now I want to do that next week. <laughs> yeah. like, well, I feel like that's an worth experiment. worth testing. Yeah. So our fingertips is, is how much we're going to use it and invest our time into it. Um, I think a lot of people are like, you know, they're scared to use it because they feel like, oh, that's not being authentically me and things like that, which relates to the music and, you know, any other types of art. But there are processes and procedures and, you know, when we're trying to get to a specific point or answer, sometimes it's best to use that. Yeah. Because it benefits the business, it benefits the process, you know, and you can get more done in other areas that are more important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are companies that are going to be, you know, opposed to, you know, how we use, you know, uh, these la large language models and so on. But, you know, they are the people that are going to get left behind if they don't know how to implement it into their workforce. Do you think there are going to be companies in like 30, 40 years that advertise themselves like as a marketing scheme that they're authentically human? <laughs> their products are 100% organically human made? I think, I think they're going to say something along the lines of 100% creative. Instead yeah. of just being technology, it's just being a human creation itself. Mm. But human, it's that would be too weird. Yeah. We are hundred percent human, human made. Well, <laughs> you never know. I, I think know. even yeah. this podcast right now, everything that we could be saying, it just could be a script from ChatGPT. Mm -hmm. But we're just putting our kind of personalities into it just to make it seem for the audience. Yeah, that is actually something that we're like coming out with as well yeah. too. Yeah. So, to your answer, I don't know. But the thing is, creativity is, I don't know if we already talked about this. Okay. I vaguely remember if Many we did. times. But creativity is, again, just the process of putting together other pieces and mm -hmm. creating something new. Yeah. So who's to say that ChatGPT isn't creative? It's yeah. technically, even though it's comprised of old parts, if yeah. a human takes mm -hmm. stuff that's inspired by a bunch of different things and creates something new, we say we created them something, we created something new, yeah. regardless of the inspiration. So what's the difference between that and ChatGPT taking stuff that already exists and creating something that doesn't? Well, I think if we think about creative as a word, mm. if we then tie that down to it has to be human generated, it has to have right. a human input mm -hmm. of a certain percentage, you know, because you got that auto GPT now, that's auto GPT. It's not anything human. Mm -hmm. It's an AI based, you know, word. And it, re it relates to, I was just about to say them, but it, <laughs> you know, I mean, words creativity <laughs> should relate to humans. <laughs> it was me first, now you. <laughs> Sam is going to be like, and I talked to her the other day. <laughs> okay. She was talking to me so nice. <laughs> I ordered a pizza. Yeah, <laughs> should be exactly what I wanted. Oh, thank you, Josefina. Um. <laughs> we salute you, Josefina. I love you, girl. Okay. Artists are left devastated. Making the process of creating art easy and for everyone has devalued the price that clients are willing to pay for it. Why would a client pay thousands for a custom work of art if they can get the same thing essentially for free? If needed, it can be touched up for a fraction of the cost. If you're not an already established artist, it's going to be a really tough time right now. And I do feel for the artists out there. Obviously, things around AI art have been developing very quickly. It's on a level, it, it's of course very heartbreaking. And then also seeing like on a collective level for the, the community of artists out there who are suffering, it's also it's just so heartbreaking. Like... <laughs> Sorry. Really sad to see like, younger artists or any artists out there who feel like they have to give up drawing because they think it's not going to be a vi viable career. And um, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. 
<laughs> but um, remember why you draw and uh, why you started drawing because I would guess that most of the time you started drawing because you enjoy it and um, I don't think you should stop. Okay. Because you're not good in anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew when you did this, dude. I was like, I, he has something to say. I'm sorry, I don't want to be mean. <laughs> I'm going to be a little mean. <laughs> That's been bubbling in your gut for the last five minutes. <laughs> like, oh, God. Not all the artist girls that watch these are going to be like, Sam, nah. That's okay. I support you. That's okay. Keep drawing. Look, listen, I'm not saying that she's she's wrong or anything. Like mm. She's no. 100% right about what she's, she's saying, but it's going to affect every industry at the end yeah. of the day because AI is not only creating art, it's automating programming, it's automating, you know, warehouse work, physical mm -hmm. work, you know, it's becoming more and more mm -hmm. autonomous. I just, I think it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to see in this current moment, but I think it's inevitable mm -hmm. and it's, it's about going through essentially a rough transition of humanity trying to figure out, I mean, the whole purpose of us working every day is just to keep the world turning you know that's all we're really doing we're getting our job is to get people jobs people work every job is just to provide a service to other human beings it is but also isn't there a point in that where it's something in terms of like self-fulfillment as well mm. we go to work to create and you know open opportunities and do things that hit the pipeline or whatnot but just imagine you wake up every day and you have the same amount of money. You're never able to go up or down a scale. You're limited in what you can do. You don't have a job or anything. You just exist, you know? Yeah, but like at the same time, have you ever considered that we only view it like that because this is all we've ever known? Is that for the longest time, our job and mission from when we're born mm -hmm. go to school mm -hmm. get a job start the family mm -hmm. contribute to the society do your nine to five mm -hmm. we are we've almost been creatively boxed into this mindset as a society but isn't that humanity but that's the human that's the only humanity we've ever known mm -hmm. we, the question is what could happen if yeah. we're free of these essentially because don't lie to me when you guys go to your nine to five you feel like you're chained to that desk half of the time not mm. half of the time, <laughs> like hundred percent of the time. Even I'm sorry, like, it's horrible. It's there yeah. are people who are incredibly lucky and are able to find something they're genuinely passionate about and they're genuinely contributing something. Mm -hmm. And for those people, great. Hopefully, AI doesn't take your job. Hopefully, that still exists. But for the majority, the vast majority of mm. humanity, these these passions and these yeah. things that are supposed to give us a purpose are the most menial tasks you can imagine. Yes, but. If we think about it from doing this podcast, for example, yeah. you're enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. It's yeah. something that, you know, we can come together about and create something that then helps other people. Mm -hmm. But if AI came along and took all that away, that's an element of me that doesn't no longer exist. Mm -hmm. As an element of me that reduces our interaction. Right. So if I can get this information by just typing it in and it gives me the video of everything that I want, then why am I going to want to sit down and listen to you? I could be doing it in you know, audience wise, it might be different. So these are different avenues of how potentially people can still, you know, create an income that isn't computer AI generated, but there still needs to be an element of you that wakes up every morning, even though there are, you know, 90% of the tasks in your job, you probably don't want to do. Mm. There's 10% of it that makes you still want to be in that job. Yeah in terms of more likely is the interaction between people. Yeah. No, but if but, that's taken away, then what do we have to live for? Yeah. And I think that human connection will always exist because like the point you guys made earlier when we were talking about music is there's that certain human element, even if it's completely AI generated and indistinguishable, you're yeah. always searching for that human element. So like, yeah, you're right. Probably going to have, not going to be in a point where we're all not working and we're all just sitting around and letting AI do everything. But like, what's the purpose of us working five days a week, nine to five? Mm. Completely waste of time. These are the things that I think are going to become more and more relevant for us, at least. There was, I, there's always going to be some sort of human involvement, probably, in every kind mm -hmm. of business. And, as, is, like, we'll is probably there? Some, I, 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm saying this, but I'm not even certain yeah. of what I'm saying. Look at the, the Amazon uh, warehouses already. There's warehouses that are being created now with no humans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this big super warehouse now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All robots. Yeah, they have like the lines on the floor that they use to guide themselves. They know yeah. exactly where to go. They don't have to take bathroom breaks. Yeah. They can work as long as Amazon needs or them to work. Or cigarette breaks. Or, yeah. or just breaks. mental health breaks as well too. Yeah. Anything. I yeah. saw a statement from, uh, about uh, why, <clears throat> I think why Amazon wanted people to um, uh, resign. Because mm. it's better for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you resign from a job, that means you don't accept any expect any um, any packages or anything like that. So for them, it's cheaper if you, you resign out of the job. You know, when you think about it like that, this recession is probably a good thing for a lot of these big tech companies mm. because I bet a lot of them are just looking at it as, oh, we can trim the fat yep. because we don't need these people anymore, and we mm -hmm. have this recession to hide behind. Yep. So that's why you know the 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 key thing that people should be taking away from this is. <laughs> Look at the business and see how you can add value, even if it includes AI, understanding about AI, how it might, you know, benefit the business. So you're not the person that gets cut. Because if you if they're cutting you, they're cutting something that will be beneficial to them mm. in the long run. So just a point to any any companies out there thinking about cutting your people. Think about who can be productive and add to your environment from that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And learn. Yeah. Learn. <laughs> I just did a little we're green. all gonna lose our jobs uh, yeah, we, we, the world we, we, is going downhill yeah we're but i do i do feel sorry for this you know these these young people that are growing up and have a, a mission of this is what i'm supposed to do in life you know because some people can be very channeled especially if you go to university you might do a degree in a, in a particular field and feel like this is all i can do this is all i'm supposed to do mm -hmm. but in reality is moving more to having multiple different forms of income, multiple different ways of impacting the world rather than this is who I am and this is all I can do. Well, that's what we were talking about as well too, coming out of like college to like the two of us, we were like, we realized after we started working that your diploma, your degree doesn't mean anything when you come out. Mm -hmm. It's actually your ability mm -hmm. to learn yep. and yep. apply new skills into your job that actually yep. helps you to become better at your job or like at any job as well yeah. too. So I feel like with this being said, I feel like what people need to start doing right now is understanding the technology and using it from the beginning, the same way that we, we were using our phones. So when they come into like the workforce, they are already knowledgeable enough to implement these yeah. technologies into like their daily lives as well too. Yeah. But for now, I don't see that happening. I see a lot of people are against using chat GPT or just learning in, in this particular mm. case of what it is. Yeah, I guess we could use use these uh, these platforms to create applications that actually teach and educate people without them even knowing. Yeah, you know, so the, the same way we get entertainment out of social media and all those all those things, if we could create something that would teach you something, even in the you know the ten second snippet that you watch, but it's auto generated by ChatGPT. Mm. You know, there could be elements of that that keep people building and developing and understanding about these platforms and how they could use them in the workforce or whatnot. But also the main key area of this is to be entertained. Yeah. So another gem that I'm giving out to the to the world right now. But as I say every week, just come and see me if you need any any input on your business. <laughs> I got some ideas. <laughs> I come at a very reasonable rate. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, so anything else you guys want to bring up in terms of, you know, things that you've been seeing over the last couple of months that have stood out to you? Yeah, but I think in particular. AI-wise? I don't know. I think there's a lot of good funny videos out of AI. And that's what I want. If I could just highlight something positive, yeah. the memes and the jokes have been... Have you guys seen the, um, the what's it called, the Balenciaga ones? It's like... Harry Potter in Balenciaga. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's an AI-generated version of all the characters from Harry Potter. Oh, yeah? But they're all posh and fancy. And they're wearing <laughs> Balenciaga. It's like, you're not a wizard, Harry. You're Balenciaga. <laughs> Just <laughs> techno music plays. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of 
like uh, we we do focus a lot on like the problems that could come with AI, yeah. but I think there's so much cool stuff that can come from AI. There's so much creative, amazing, funny things that can be made, and like I, you know, humanity is never gonna stop. Yeah, you know, we're never gonna stop. We could we could sit here and try and be against it, and the rest of the world can try and be engaged to all they want. Mm. But there's profit in it. Mm -hmm. And people are going to push it. They're going to do whatever they can to, you know, was the line from uh, <laughs> Jurassic Park that's like, your scientists spent so long wondering if they could that they never stopped to think if they should. Yeah. And that's the, that's the, it's a pattern with humanity. We're just going to keep doing that. Yeah. So I embrace it. He had a perfect ending. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to say. You can cut this part as well. Too. <laughs> um, so nothing else from you? From to my, bring. Well, from my side, it will be only like, don't be against it. Just learn about it. Give give it a little bit of, give it a try just to see how it works out as well too. And maybe try to implement it in your daily life. Mm. And if you actually see that it doesn't work, then maybe it's, wait, don't be just fully against just using the AI portion. Yeah. But at the same time, just be alone for the ride. Don't yeah. be, you know, scared of things that are moving for, into the future, as I'm saying. Be cool. Be cool. cool. Be, be, cool. be cool until it's time <laughs> to be uncool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, thank you guys for coming and spending some time with me and sharing your thoughts and ideas on the, the future and the present and the past. Um, I wish you guys, you guys all the best. I um, hope AI treats you well. <laughs> In the future, I will be watching and paying attention. Uh, okay, so... In terms of social media wise, you you guys get anything that you want to put? I am not on social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, my social media is all personal stuff, so okay, nah. yeah. Nah. But thank you online. very much for having us on your show, man. No it worries, was an man. absolute pleasure, an yeah. honor to be here. It was great, and be on the lookout. Probably we're gonna be doing something alongside hey. our man here, Leroy. Yep. Mr. Rock. Mr. Rock. Yeah, there Rock. we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> keep keep forgetting. Yeah. Leave yeah. that one out. Okay. <laughs> cool. You. Well, definitely gonna have you guys on back on this show. And then when we do something together, it's gonna be even more greater. But uh for in the meantime, thank you all for taking the time to listen to the podcast. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up to date with what's going on in the world and how people in the world are using technology and making the best of it. Okay, until next week. Peace. Five, four, three, two.